Canon's new cameras have leaked. Should you care? Let's find out. We're gonna answer the questions like, would these be good first cameras? Should you upgrade from your Canon ADD or other camera cam Canon cameras? Are DSLRs dead? Is the Canon M mount dead? And why am I wearing glasses? All these mysteries will be unraveled in just the next few seconds. But first, our back to school sale, which you can get at Northrop.photo. We're offering a huge 30% off of everything. So head to Northrop.photo and use the coupon code LEARN30. Learn 30, you can get stunning digital photography with 14 hours of video, the number one photography book in the world, or our Lightroom and Photoshop video books if you want to learn post-processing. Also at 4 p.m., we have another live stream. This is in just two hours. You can submit your self-portraits, creative self-portraits at sdp.io slash submit and tune in at sdp.io slash not selfies. That's a self-portrait that I made just a couple of days ago. This is based on leaked information, thanks to canonrumors.com. There might be errors. I noticed some typos in the information that was leaked, so there could be other errors as well. Please check the pinned comment, and I will update any mistakes that we might have made. First of all, the 90D. This is an upgrade to Canon's 80D, which is their APS-C DSLR camera, and the 70D, the 80D, were huge cameras and the 90D will no doubt be huge. We use both the 70D and the 80D for video because they had amazing video autofocus and they were one of the few cameras that had a side flip screen. We've since graduated to the Canon EOS R, but this speaks to how amazing they are at video because we have access to all the latest and coolest gear and I still love that EOS R and the Canon focusing system better than anything. The most exciting new feature of the 90D is that it has 32 and a half megapixels in an APS-C camera. And to the best of my knowledge, this hasn't been done before. This is a very high megapixel count. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. It also is advertising either 1 8,000th or 1 16,000th maximum shutter speed. I suspect it's 1 8,000th with the mechanical shutter and 1 16,000th probably using the rear screen and an electronic shutter. So in practice, 8,000th of a second is probably what you'd be limited to. It has an optical viewfinder. It is not a mirrorless camera. So it's like you're looking through a telescope or something like it's just literally light bouncing into your eyes. It has a pop-up flash like its predecessors, but unlike the 7D Mark II, and it has a single SD card slot, but it's higher performance UHS-2, and that should help minimize buffering. It's also a weather sealed camera. For video, it has an important side flip screen. This makes filming yourself much easier. And for us, it's an absolute requirement. Filming ourselves is something we do all the time, but it's also useful for just taking selfies or creative self portraits or just framing things up when you happen to be in front of the camera at an unusual angle. You cannot use the viewfinder while you're recording video. That's a key distinction between DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Canon is advertising 4K 30 at full width, and that is really exciting. Canon has not done this before, but they put a little asterisk after it. What they're saying is that it requires, it achieves 4K 30 frames per second through image processing. And what some people have figured out through experimentation with other Canon cameras is that they don't actually process 4K video. They process the video at a lower resolution and then artificially scale it up. So you're not getting 4K worth of detail. And that's what this is indicating. It's not going to be a true 4K. And why bother? Well, genuinely, like, why do you want just extra data if it's not representing detail? So let me just give me the lower resolution output and I will scale it up in post if I feel like doing that. It also offers 1080 at 120 frames per second, which would be basically four times slow motion for most of you but it has limitations as well. It has no autofocus in slow motion mode and it's cropped, probably severely cropped. We'll find out the exact crop later, but it's probably going to be similar to what the EOS R does. And when we tested the EOS R for slow motion, we simply decided slow motion is useless. It was absolute garbage. So it's not gonna answer that problem. And as with other Canon cameras, it has a 30 minute time limit, which is a problem for some of us vloggers. When you're using the viewfinder on the 90D, this is a more traditional old school type of usage of the camera and the camera needs to ch totally change personalities. If you're a person who's only used your smartphone or you've only used mirrorless cameras, this would be completely baffling. People nowadays really struggle with the change of personalities. When you look through the viewfinder, suddenly you're limited to 45 
autofocus points, but they're cross, uh, cross type autofocus points. So they focus much faster than the rear screen does. This is very good AF coverage, but it does not reach the corners of the frame like you would expect from your smartphone or a mirrorless camera. You have 10 frames per second, which is very fast. That matches the 7D Mark II, but doesn't match some of the competitors. And we'll talk about that in a second. And for the first time, Canon is giving you face detect. Face detect works by, um, using the metering system built into the 90D. So DSLRs have an off sensor metering system that figures out how bright or dark the image should be. And this can see full color and therefore it can kind of distinguish the shapes of faces and it'll find a face in the frame and then pick the autofocus points that happen to be over the face. Nikon has had the system for a while and it's helpful, it's useful. It's mostly useful for just getting better metering off of the face. However, it's not precise. It's not going to focus on the eye. It's just going to focus anywhere on the face. And therefore, if you're using shallow depth of field, something like an 85 millimeter F1.4, it's gonna ruin focus for you. It's not gonna be good enough. You'll still have to revert back to selecting a single focus point and manually putting it on the eye. If you're just shooting casually with a kit lens, it'll be fine. Um, it also won't reach the edges of the frame like some eye detect focusing systems will. When you're using the LCD, the rear screen on the Canon 90D, you will get full AF coverage up corner to corner, but you'll be using their dual pixel autofocus system, which in my mind, the dual pixel autofocus is the best live view system that any DSLR manufacturer has. It's very good, but it's much, much slower than using the viewfinder. So you go from using the viewfinder with fast sports-like autofocus tracking to this very slow, more like nice smooth video pull type of autofocus. The frames per second can go up to 11 using the electronic shutter, but this probably won't work well for fast moving action because I suspect we'd get rolling shutter artifacts. That's something that we'll test when we get our hands on the camera. And when you use the LCD, you will get eye detect autofocus. And let's talk a little bit more about this. As, eye detect, as this shows, eye detect autofocus will just find the focusing point closest to the eye. It finds the shape of the face and then finds the shape of the nearest eye and we'll focus on it. And in our experience with the EOS R, it works in really limited situations. First, when I'm filming myself with the ESR, I will use it and it will find my eye whenever I'm in the frame and it works great. Maybe the focusing happens to be a little bit more precise. But let's talk about using it for shooting portraits, which is when you really want eye detect autofocus. First, eye detect autofocus only works on the cannons when you're standing very close to your subject. So you have to be filling, their, filling the frame with their head pretty much if it's... Uh, half body shot, it's you're not gonna be close enough and it's not going to pick up the eye. You will only be able to focus on the face and then it's not precise enough to focus on the face and get the face in, sub, in focus when you're using a telephoto lens like an 85 F1.8. As the subject turns their head, it will lose the autofocus point and regain it when they turn back. Um, but this can be a challenge because it does not work with single point autofocus it will only work when you have all autofocus points selected and you are allowing the camera to pick the autofocus point. This is a scenario I would only suggest for people who are very casual photographers, the type who pick up the camera and just let the camera focus and snap a shot. But if you're a serious amateur or a professional photographer, you are going to want to always be telling the camera exactly where to focus because sometimes the camera will focus on the wrong spot and you don't wanna to have to be like, oh man, I messed this up. So eye detect autofocus does not work in the focusing modes that most serious photographers would use. It also does not work with the viewfinder on the 90D. We'll talk about the Canon 66 M6 Mark II in a second, and it does work with the viewfinder on that camera. So the sensor has 32.5 megapixel switches, a lot for an APS-C camera. This is 61% more than the outgoing 7D Mark II, 55% more than the Nikon D500, 34% more than the 80D and the A6400, and 25% more than the X-T3, the Fujifilm X-T3. Didn't mean to write Canon X-T3. But what lenses are you gonna put on it? Because right now, Canon does not have any super sharp APS-C lenses. All their APS-C lenses are very like consumer oriented. Canon has amazing pro quality glass, but every single one of their best lenses that we've tested is a full frame lens. And we have run through it. Okay, they have some okay lenses, but none of them are like pro grade sharp. So 
What that means is, yes, you will see some additional detail extracted using that higher megapixel sensor. It is not going to be completely wasted, but you will not be getting as much out of it as you could if Canon were to offer some great lenses. Sigma has a couple of great lenses, the 18 to 35 f1.8 and the 50 to 100 f1.8, but consistently people have autofocus problems with those. We gave up using them and I've gotten emails from so many people who bought them because they were super sharp and super fast, but then had to stop using them because they were too flaky. So we don't recommend them for that reason. And as a result, you're kind of out of luck at extracting the most out of that detail, except maybe in one scenario. And that's wildlife. And that's where this camera really interests me because that high pixel density on a smaller sensor gives you an equivalent of 83 megapixels if it were a full frame camera in situations where you'd have to crop anyway, which is like most wildlife you end up cropping anyway. That provides 173% more pixels than the Canon 5D Mark IV, which means you'll be extracting crazy amounts of detail from your images. It's 82% more megapixels than the Nikon D850, which has been our favorite wildlife camera for years, and even 36% more than the 60 megapixel Sony a7R4. So for wildlife scenarios, I think this might produce the very best images of any camera ever, and I cannot wait to try it out because I still have my big Canon 500 f4, and if I could get a little more life out of that and get more great images out of that, I would, I would buy the camera. I also want to say this gives us a hint that Canon's next full frame camera might have an 83 megapixel sensor because it's very common for manufacturers to release a full frame and an APS-C sensor with similar pixel densities because it just makes the engineering a little bit easier for them. Sony just released a 60 megapixel sensor and Canon always wants to be the high megapixel king. So I bet we're going to see an 83 megapixel sensor soon. Let's talk about the other camera Canon released. This is the M6 Mark II. This is a mirrorless M-mount camera, which in the United States is not popular at all. However, I understand they're popular in Japan and some other places. The M6 Mark II has 14 frames per second with autofocus and 30 frames per second without autofocus. Now, right away, you're gonna think, okay, that's faster than the, than the 90D, so it must be better at things like sports, but it is not going to be better at things like sports because it does not have the 90D's uh, phase detect autofocus system. It only has dual pixel autofocus. Well, that's phase detect, but it's not nearly as fast as when using the optical viewfinder on the 90D. So uh, it's not something I'm going to recommend for sports. The Canon dual pixel autofocus system is simply too slow to do a great job at that kind of thing. The maximum shutter speed is limited to one four thousandth of a second, like the 90D. It has a single UHS 2 SD card slot, and it does support USB charging. It has a flip up screen like the A6400 that I have here. This is okay. If you wanna just hold the camera out and get a selfie, it's great for that. I like that. However, it would be blocked by a flash if you were to put it in there. If you were to put a mic in the hot shoe, it would be blocked by that. So you can't really use it for vlogging without some sort of additional attachment. What we've done here on the A6400, grab it. We've attached uh, what's called a small rig to it. And that allows me to see the viewfinder here, see the, the rear screen, attach a mic to it and attach other things to it. And it's kind of ridiculous for a camera that might be designed for vloggers to have to then attach an extra thing just to see yourself and have a mic. And it's not something that makes any sense to me, but that's how they do it. The USB charging as recommended by Canon, requires a $190 USB charger that's also really bulky, which totally defeats the purpose of USB charging, right? Because to me, USB charging is, oh, I'm traveling and I have a USB charger for my phone. I want to just plug my camera in too so I don't have to carry separate batteries or separate charger. However, I have found that I can use my MacBook USB-C charger to charge the EOS R, so I suspect it would also work on the M6 in which case, okay, that's fine because I tra travel with that anyway. It does not come with an electronic viewfinder. You have to buy a separate $200 optional EVF that would pop into that hot shoe. And of course, that means you can't then put something else in the hot shoe and it makes the camera a little bit more bulky. And of course, you're spending an extra $200. It's also not the highest resolution EVF out there, but it's a decent resolution. It's okay. Um, 
Otherwise, the features are very similar to the 90D. These are like close brothers. They have the same limitations on video. Uh, the video, this applies to both of them. It's H.264.6 only. Um, there is no sense of stabilization on any of them. For the M6 specifically, the lens selection is very, very limited. So you're really, you're gonna have a tough time getting shallow depth of field um, unless you decide that you're going to ad adapt Canon DSLR lenses, which does work okay. And that's something we do on the EOS R still because we still don't have R mount lenses either. It's also using the LPE17 battery, the EOS M, and it's a very small battery that we found very frustrating to use for video. It, basically, if we are going out for a day of shooting with the video, we have to bring two or even three batteries with us. So do that or keep it attached to a USB-C battery charger that's continually recharging it. I wish they'd put a bigger battery and it would make it much more useful. They, are, they advertise a feature called raw photo burst and this can be useful. It will shoot at a very high frame rate for a very brief amount of time. If you wanna capture action at a very fast frame rate, it's something that's useful as you can see in this video clip, but at the same time, it's not changing focus between frames. It's not changing auto exposure between frames. And so it's not as useful as you might think. Don't think it's a general purpose feature. Dual pixel autofocus is the only autofocus system that this has. It does not have the separate DSLR autofocusing system. We found it to be very accurate. It will focus anywhere in the frame. However, it's painfully slow for still photography. Well, it's gotten better, but it's still much slower than your DSLR would be. If you're switching from, if you're choosing between the 90D and the M6, the 90D is going to snap into focus much faster. It's going to track moving subjects much faster when you're using the viewfinder. With the M6, that stuff could get frustrating and I would not recommend it for action, but it is satisfactory for still subjects and absolutely stunning for video. That's why we almost always use it. Let's compare the 90D to its predecessor, the 80D, and the other top-end Canon camera, the 7D Mark II. The 7D Mark II had only 20 megapixels, the 80D had 24 megapixels, the 90D has 32.5 megapixels, so that's a huge jump. The 90D has 10 frames per second, which is a big leap over the 80D, but only matches the 7D Mark II. We still don't know the buffer on the 90D. And that's gonna be a big deal for both sports and wildlife. So I need to find that out before I know if it's going to be something we can recommend and we'll test. So be sure to subscribe to see that. It has a side flip screen like the 80D, which I think is much better than the fixed screen on the 7D Mark II, especially if you ever shoot video. It has a pop-up flash, which the 80D has, but the 7D Mark II does not have. And well, they're advertising 4K 30 video, but again, that's got a very big asterisk on there, which is to say it's not actually 4K video, but a lower resolution video that is artificially scaled up. A big deficiency compared to the 7D Mark II is it only has a single SD card slot. In a recent poll, we polled 4,300 photographers. About half of those photographers had experienced at least one SD fail card failure in their career. Those photographers who'd taken over a million shots in their career were 75% likely to have experienced an SD card failure. SD card failures are real. If you take pictures that you can't afford to lose, that you don't want to gamble with, then you should be looking for a camera that supports two SD card slots, and you should be using those two SD card slots to write to both Redundantly, we've had many SD card failures in our career, including some that were a real pain to us. The 90D, unlike the other Canon cameras, also adds face and eye detect, though like I've said, those are of limited use, so they might not be something you'd want to upgrade for. Compared to the other top-end cameras, APS-C cameras from Sony and Fuji, the Canon has more megapixels and a similar frame rate, though the Fujifilm X-T3 advertises a full 30 frames per second, our experience with it is that in practice, we only get about 11 frames per second. And if you hear that beeping, it seems to be because we lost power and our UPSs are kicking in. So sorry about that. The X-T3 has a tilt screen. Um, Justin, maybe you can just leave it on that camera and see if you can hit the mute button on the UPS. You'll see a little button on the front of it. The X-T3 has a tilt screen, but not a side flip screen, so you can't see yourself when you're filming. The A6400, which we have here, has a pop a flip up screen, so it would be blocked by the mic unless you put it on a separate attachment. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. The X-T3 is by far the best camera for video unless you need to see yourself because it has 4K 60 and it's proper 4K and the video quality looks great. The A6400 does great quality 4K 30, but it won't do 60 frames per second. And the 90D, again, has that big asterisk there. 
of these cameras, only the X-T3 has two card slots, which is important. The A6400 is the best eye detect. The X-T3 has good eye detect, but not as good as the Sony. And the 90D has the weakest, most limited eye detect. Lens selection is really important. And for some reason, nobody ever talks about this, but um, the Canon 90D has a good selection of native APS-C lenses. But again, as I mentioned before, it's missing like really pro-grade lenses. The Sony APS-C lens lineup is very limited and we found the lenses there to be not of great quality at all. Sony makes great full-frame lenses, but their APS-C lens lineup is really weak. However, the Fujifilm X-T3, that gorgeous camera there, has an amazing APS-C lens lineup and Overall, those lenses are gonna have a really big impact on the impact of your photos and the technical image quality. And for those reasons, I really push most APS-C buyers towards the Fuji system now. I think it's the best of those three. When you compare those same two cameras to the Canon M6 Mark II, of course, the megapixel difference is the same. The M6 Mark II offers 14 frames per second, but we'll have to see how that really performs in the real world. And as with the 90D, it has only a single SD card slot, weak 4K, weak eye detect, and poor lenses. So what are the things we're disappointed about? First, it's totally unfair to be disappointed with this because it's something that's brand new that didn't exist before. So why are you looking at gift horse in the mouth, right? But okay, we will do it. <laughs> I uh, I wish it was a 7D Mark III because that's the camera I really want. It seems like a lot of people are, the most interest is definitely in the higher end pro grade lenses and the 7D Mark II was our wildlife camera for a long time until the D500 was released by Nikon. And I would love to go back to Canon, but this really isn't the perfect wildlife camera for me because it has only that single card slot. It does not have proper 4K30, much less 4K60, which they should be offering now. So Canon is still way behind. The eye detect autofocus is not going to be good enough unless they've made some big improvement to it that they didn't announce, but I think they would have told us. Still doesn't have sensor stabilization, which, well, the A6400, the X-T3 don't have those, but Sony does have them in their lineup. Fuji does have it in their lineup. And it's something that cameras should have nowadays. It has a, the old style 1970s Casio top LCD. And <clears throat> one feature I keep hoping to find is somebody will put in cellular connectivity or proper apps into their cameras and nobody has done that yet. Please subscribe for the pricing and release state for tests asking whether those extra megapixels are useful or wasted. We'll test the dynamic range of noise. We'll test the buffer. We'll decide if this is the best wildlife camera because I think it just might be. We'll decide how it works as a vlogging camera, how the face detect works in real world situations. Is the AA filter wrecking the sharpness on it or is it okay? And how useful actually is the 4K on it? Let's answer the question, are DSLRs dead? We did a whole video about this recently and I wildly speculated that DSLRs would continue to sell. And I think it's coming true. I think Canon has looked at the sales of the EOS R lineup and realized, okay, we can't just ditch our EF, our EOS DSLR lineup. We have to keep making those cameras. And it seems like they are. So you can feel comfortable investing in a DSLR system at least for a while now. The DSLR system, especially from Canon, really offers the best value. The prices are the best. If you try to get the same results, counting both cameras and lenses together, if you get those same results out of another system, you're not going to be able to do it. It's going to cost you much more. So they don't have all the features, but they still offer a good value. Is the EOS M mount dead? This is something I'm not as sure about. Yes, Canon's releasing a brand new camera for it, so it's clearly not dead, but how much life is left in it? Canon seems to be putting most of their effort into the full frame EOS R lineup as they probably should be, but there is a healthy market for the APS-C M mount lineup, but it's very confusing to me why Canon is attempting to maintain so many different incompatible systems. And yes, you can adapt DSLR lenses to the M mount, but any M mount lenses you buy, you can't put them on your 90D, you can't put them on your EOS R. It, it seems like it has to end at some point and at some point might not be that far off. Are these good first cameras for people? If you're shooting sports and wildlife, I think the 90D would be an excellent choice. The closest competition would be the X-T3, which is to me a lot more fun to use. And I would push most people into the Fuji system unless you really want the most bang for the buck. 
I have never recommended an EOS M camera to anybody, mostly because of the severely limited um, lens lineup and the fact that the autofocus doesn't keep up with what Sony and Fuji currently have if you are into mirrorless cameras, so I'm not gonna start recommending it now. Are these good upgrades? Uh, for 80D, 70D users, absolutely. The 90D is the best APS-C camera Canon has ever made. For 70D Mark II users, if you're shooting wildlife or sports and you want extra detail, yeah, I think it's gonna be great for you, but maybe hold off, subscribe, and wait for that full review. Was this leak deliberate? A lot of people are speculating that this announcement that won't be made for at least a few days was leaked deliberately to kind of hype up these cameras. I am 99% sure this was not deliberate. Having worked closely with the team at Canon and every manufacturer, they are very upset when something leaks. They try really hard not to leak information. And I would bet people probably got fired if not severely reprimanded. This sort of leak is a big deal. People get frustrated, they get mad, they lose sleep. I speak confidently when I say that this leak was accidental and not deliberate. And it really takes away some of their fire. Like they'd rather have a big launch with all the information available. They provided no information to me personally about this. So that's kind of why I'm forced to speculate about some of these things. Why am I wearing glasses? Because I have a serious case of Cholula finger. I ate a burrito earlier and I got hot sauce on my finger and even though I wash my hands, it, it doesn't it doesn't completely it never you can't get Cholula out of your finger. And then I went to put my contacts in and like I felt like my whole eye was literally bursting into flames. So I put my glasses back on. Aren't you glad you asked? Be sure to subscribe to see the full review and we'll test out the image quality of these two cameras versus the Canon 80D, the 7D Mark II the Sony A6400, and of course the Fujifilm X-T3. If you have follow-up questions, write a comment down below. If I made a mistake, write a comment and I will update that pinned comment. Thanks and see you at four o'clock for our creative self-portrait live stream. Bye.